YouTube channel Farmhouse Stitcher. Today is April 13th 2021 um, and I'm back here today with uh, Floss Tube number 43 update for you. Um, this is take three. The first time our kitten Reuben was being a rat so I sin binned him to the bedroom. Um, then I started filming the second one and then the other cat, Jasper, decided to get in amongst all of my stuff. So I had to stop again and send me and him to the bedroom. Um, but we'll get there. So I have two of my three puppies here behind me today. Um, filming in a different location because uh, I've been getting a comment on at least one comment every video almost about a light that keeps going off. Uh, where I can't usually film um, going on and off um, it's nothing creepy or anything it's just a sense of light but I thought I'd try filming in a different location because I have a lot to show and I'm surrounded by a lot of stuff today um, so we're filming here and then we've got the puppies here to help well, two out of our three puppies so this one is Chloe and this one is Sasha yeah hey Sash Sasha is the mummy to Chloe and then our other little boy, uh, Marley, so who is actually bigger than her now. So she is the mum to the two of them. Um, she had two litters of puppies and they were from the first litter of puppies. Um, so just to a bit of chit chat first, um, I think the last floss tube video I did, I was going in to have gallbladder surgery done. Uh, so I did go in and have that done. Um, all went well. I came home the same day um, and the recovery wasn't too bad. The first two, three days were a little rough, obviously, but after that, it was pretty good. Um, and I got a phone call a few weeks after that um, from about the pathology from the gallbladder coming um, being sent off and they said that it was chronically inflamed and really badly needed to come out and it had over 50 gallstones so they were like it really needed to come out when it came out so that was good um, at least I didn't have to go any longer with it causing issues um so we have um little chicks that we've hatched out here as well um a few weeks ago we had we actually had five broody mums um three that were on their own and then we had two that were brooding together um and when we moved them the couple of days before they were due to hatch out of the coop um one of them decided she wasn't going to sit on the eggs anymore so and the other one kept stealing them anyway so um we ended up breaking her um we tried to break her a couple of times she was the one that kicked off the whole okay well let's just let them hatch more again um we'd been trying to break broody hens we'd had several that we'd broken and we tried breaking her three times and we just couldn't do it so in the end i was like just have some eggs then and go for it and then, of course, so then after her, then we had like a three more, uh, four more go broody. So I was like, well, you can't let one hatch and not the others. So anyway, we um, let them all sit, but only on like a few eggs each. And 
So we ended up out of 13 eggs, 12 developed, one mustn't have been fertilized. It didn't do anything. It didn't even start to develop. Um, and then we had 12 that hatched. Um, we had one little one that hatched with splayed leg, which is our first time dealing with splayed leg um, with our hatches. Um, it actually hatched under one mama um, and the it was sort of mid to late, like once sort of lunchtime-ish, I guess. Um, and then I sort of checked underneath her and I thought, you know, it wasn't doing the best with its leg, but I thought, oh, well, it's, sometimes they take a day or so to find their legs. Anyway, the next day when I checked, it still had its leg out to the side. So I'm like, okay, that's splayed leg. So I brought it up um, and I put a brace on it and I put slipped it in under one of our other mamas who she'd hatched five eggs, but some of hers was, well, she had five eggs under her, but um, most of hers had hatched, but she was still waiting on like one to hatch. So I put the brace on it and slipped it in under her because she wasn't up and moving around and the other mum was, and I the other one couldn't keep, the little one with the brace couldn't keep up. And I don't have a heat light that's working at the moment. So I slipped it in under her, no problem. She didn't even, I just cupped it in my hand, slipped it in under, and I'd been checking under her for the ones hatching anyway. So she didn't even notice any difference. Um, anyway, the next, later that day, she started getting up and about because some of hers had hatched, uh, oh, like all of hers had hatched and were getting around. And the little one kept slipping over. So I initially put it in a little glass. Um, that's another way you put the brace on, put a tissue in the bottom and stand them in the glass because then they've got to put pressure on their legs. You want it sort of fairly tiny um, so they can't jump out. But I was worried about it getting cold. Um, so then I left the brace off for a few hours that afternoon because it could get around without the brace on, but it was just hard because it was had one leg out to the side. So I then um, decided, well, I'll leave the brace off. And then that night, once she settled down for bed, I would put the brace on and leave the brace on overnight. So I did that. And then the next morning, it was still having trouble walking around with the brace on. It kept falling over with the brace on. So then I thought, oh, we had some cardboard and some hay down there for them. And I think that was making it too slippery. So I ended up putting down some puppy pee, pee pads. And once I did that, it was able to get around with the brace on, no problems. Um, so it got to about day four and it looked like it hadn't made any improvement. So I was, we we're getting worried, we we're contemplating, should we cull it? Because it's not fair to it if it's gonna be in pain and can't get around. Um, and we thought, oh, we'll give it another day or two, see what happens. Well, day five, it was probably about 80% better. So it made a big improvement from day four to day five. So I kept it on all up, I think, until day nine. And you wouldn't know any different now. So, but we nicknamed that one Chipper because it was a very chirpy little one when I had it in the glass. But now I call it, kind of call it my weirdo baby because it's... The, the side that had the splayed leg has got straight feathers and the other side of the chick is a frizzle. So I call it my little weirdo baby at the moment uh, until we know what gender it is. I'm thinking it's a girl, but I'm not 100% sure yet till it gets a bit older. So, and then we did lose another one. Um, I don't know what happened. It was fine when we went to bed and the next morning it was had died. So... I was surprised when my husband said it was another one and not the um, uh, the one that had the bad leg because I thought maybe it might have. But anyway, I don't know what happened to it, but obviously something was wrong. So yeah, so we have 11 little chickies running around currently. Um, they're still with their mamas. They'll be with mamas until they're six plus weeks. Some of them like to um, stay with their babies a bit longer. Others are sort of over it by that five, six week mark, we've noticed. Um, so um, that's the update with all our little chickens. Um, they're all running around like crazy. So all the bigger ones and the quails are all doing well. So that's our little farmy update. Um, 
Uh, now let's get into the cross stitch stuff. So I do have a lot to show today. I'm going to show some previous finishes. This is all Easter and spring um, stitching and embroidery. Um, so I'll do it the same way that I've done it previous videos where I'll do the cross stitch first and then I'll do the embroideries second. Um, and then I have haul this time as well. So I'll do the haul last at the end. Um, so as far as cross stitch, I have a few previous finishes that I have done. So I'm going to show those first. Um, they were previous finishes from, I think 2019, the year where I didn't, one of the first year that I didn't, um, do floss tube after my son died. So actually no, so yeah, 2019. Um, so I don't remember the names to some of them. Um, or who the designers are. I should have probably looked it up, but I didn't, so. But anyway, this one here, I love this one, and I love this finish. And it says, it's fresh eggs. I can't remember the designer for this one. Um, I got this finish idea from Priscilla Blaine. Um, I think she finished this one and did it in the same finish. And so I got my husband to make this little fence post for me. Um, like the paling thing for me, you put it together and I really love this one. I think it's one of my favorite finishes. Um, so that's that one. Sorry, I'm going to have to move around a bit because I've got so much here. Um, so this one here, I know this is a Blackbird Designs one. Uh, I can't remember the name of it. Um, but I know this one, it was discontinued the pattern for a while. I bought the pattern originally off of, um, eBay and it was a discontinued pattern. Um, but because it was so popular, they actually brought it back. I just can't remember the name. Um, I had the pattern somewhere, but I still haven't located all of my stitching stuff since moving yet. I've still got stuff to unpack in my craft room, but I'll give you a closer up of that one. And this one here, I just finished on a, like a picture frame. It's just a plasticky kind of one. And I just painted over it a little bit with chalk paint, put some fabric in the back. And I, I love that finish. And then this one here is a Lizzie Kate one. I think it's Easter string or bunny string, something like that it's called. I know it's Lizzie Kate. So I did this, this is just a frame, I think I got my husband to make for me. Um, and then I did the chalkboard um, background for it, just on some MDF and I staple gunned that into the back. And then I just mounted it on to lots of fabric, spring colored fabric. And then just put some greenery stuff there with a little green flower. And I just, I love that finish too. Um, and then one more previous finish. I need to fix this one. Um, I believe it's a Lizzie Kate one too, but I can't remember the name of it. Uh, so this is another frame I got hubby to build for me and I mounted in some chicken wire um, and then did the back and I painted it in this turquoisey color. Like I did it sort of like a watered down finish um, and then that's this one. I just did a little ruffle and then the flowers and then this little ribbon butterfly I made. I used to make headbands and I had some made so I used it up on that because I thought it was really cute. Um, it does have some beads on it, a couple of beads and one's come loose so I need to fix that. That's the only thing um, I need to try and fix that somehow. So that is all the previous finishes. Um, so I'm going to move into my new cross stitch finishes from this year. Um, so I'll start with this one. I've had to fix some of this because Reuben, the kitten, pulled one of the carrots and that out. So this is, I don't remember the name of it. I did stitch this one in 2019 as well, but I didn't get it FFO'd until this year. Um, so this is... A pattern that was in I believe it might have been the 2018 or 2019 just cross stitch magazine um, and it's just it's gorgeous this bunny so that's the bunny and then I mounted it this is a drawer that I found in a council cleanup a 
couple of years ago so i finished it off into the drawer i <clears throat> did mount um some boards in behind it just some cardboard blocks um to bring the stitching out a little bit and then i added the little moss bunnies and the carrots and the eggs and just some flowers at the top and i absolutely love this finish um i think it's super super cute oops i need that one over now this is another piece that i stitched i think in 2019 maybe no last year i think i stitched it i just didn't get anything ffo'd last year and this is one of the i think it's a brenda deray uh, one of the hoopla series spring hoopla or something so this was a old clock that i'd found in a council cleanup um and I knew I wanted to mount it on here. I was gonna make it interchangeable for the other ones, but I decided at the end just to glue it on. Um, so I painted, I took the clock face out and then I got, I painted it um, black for the drawer and the white thing. And then just the black gingham, added the bunnies to the drawer <clears throat> and a little bit of greenery and egg stuff. And then the little watering can I really liked um, to match in with the watering can. That's why I decided not to <clears throat> FFO that. I mean, not to make it interchangeable in the end. Okay, this is one that I stitched this year. Uh, I do have the pattern, but I think it's in there. Um, anyway, it's Hippity Hoppity Easter's on its way from Shannon Christine Designs. This is a little chalkboard piece that I picked up from our local tip shop. Um, and straight away I knew I wanted to finish this onto it because I was working on this at the time. And then I just mounted it on some pink and purple um, checkered fabric with a little bit of lace trim and added the bows and some uh, flowers at the top. And that was just a nice, super simple finish and I really like it. Um, okay, I'll leave the big one to last. Um, so this is 1869 Croc, I think, from, um, it's a little freebie from Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting. Um, and I mounted it just on this cute little plate. I thought that went really well. And then just added a little bow at the top. Um, so Melissa from Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting has the most gorgeous little designs. Um, this was a little freebie that um she had and um all of her patterns are free so go and check her out oh uh, she's on instagram and then she's on i got a blog as well um, but if you go to her instagram you'll find like the link for her blog and stuff so anyway i just did it on this little yellow plate and i just thought the little bits of black in it and stuff and added the little black bow some green bow and a green flower so I like that one too now this is another little freebie from Melissa as well from Pinker and Pumpkin Quilting I think it's Spring Barnyard or something I can't remember uh, mine's actually a bit smaller than the ones I've usually done because I did this one on an 18 count green um, Ada I dyed myself the same as the 1869 croc one I also did that on the 18 count so it's a bit smaller too um, and then I just added a little bit of I did the um, black and white gingham for the background and I just mounted that directly over the glass and I just hot glue it to the back um, and then I just did a little bit of black trim um, the flower matched the I did like a darkish pinky maroony red so the flower matched that and just a little bit of a bow and the flowers so that one is super cute too um so this one here i stitched last year um but i just ffo'd it actually yesterday so this was also a freebie i can't remember who that was from um but it's spring or spring tulips um I believe it was on Instagram that I found this, came across this one from, I think I seen Northern RN or something stitched it and that's how I seen it. That was last year. And I had this green plate and it just fitted perfectly um, and did the little bit of greenery and the white bow. 
the little butterfly and just did the twine wrapped around with the bow on the bottom of the gingham, black gingham for the backing. Um, pop that over there. I should have got the pattern out for this one, but I forgot. Um, this one here I stitched this time as well. Uh, something and peep, I know it's a Brenda Gervais one. So that is my finish for that one. I stitched, I colored the chocolate bound fabric myself, um, which is very similar to the color that it was, the model was stitched on. And then I had this shiplap um, contact. So I covered just a piece of MDF board, excuse me, um, that I mounted it onto. And I just did the, the blue and the pink fabric to match in with the blue and the pink in there. And then just the, um, added the two hollyhocks at the top with a bow and a bunny. And then these were um, little jute, uh, I mean, sort of Hessian bunnies. I actually picked them up from Kmart here in Australia. It was actually like a bunting, so it was joined together with um, the jute twine. And I just pulled them off. They came off pretty quickly, uh, pretty easily from that. Um, this one here is another little finish that I finished off just recently. Uh, it's a little chick. It was another little freebie I got off of Pinterest, I think. I think La Crissy or something. I'm not 100% sure on how to pronounce the designer's name. Um, so, and I had this nest. So I was actually, um, I bought the, a couple of these nests from Kmart. They were like $2 in Kmart. So I was looking for something that I could stitch small enough to fit in here. Um, and I wanted it chick themed, obviously being the nest. So I mounted it inside a little toodle nest, just added a bit of greenery and these little pink um, things. And then the little flower and just a couple of eggs in the bottom there. So I'm super happy with how that one turned out. It was so cute and it stitched up in no time. Uh, so this is another one from Pinker and Punk and Quilting, Melissa. Um, I, th I can't think of the name of this one. Something and Bunnies. I keep the magnet doesn't want to hold the best on this one today. Um, I might need to re-magnetize this one somehow. That's better. So if you remember, I think in my last floss tube video, I painted this trivet and did the top um, for her Valentine's version of that one. Uh, and so I've done it so that I could do it interchangeable um, to be able to do the whole series and have them change out on there. So that's that little one. It's just a little bit of um, some leaves and a little bit of greenery, white flowers. I just wanted to keep it neutral so that I could um, have that um, for all of them and it would suit all the themes. Um, so this is another little one I stitched a couple of years ago as well and I just didn't get it finished I think 2019 so this was a little chopping board thing that I found either at a tip shop or a, a council cleanup I can't remember I can't even remember who the patterns by um, now so and then, so I just chalk painted it with the matte black spray can uh, and then added some of the corally pink to match the pink that was in it. I stitched this on 18 count green Ada that I colored myself. And then I just added the little white bow and the green flower, something simple as well. Um, I like doing the simple, fin like getting them done quickly, <laughs> so. This little one here is a little freebie from Shannon Christine Designs. She released this little freebie last year. Um, and it's this cute little purple spring truck with the bunnies. It's so cute. And this was just a little plastic tray that I got from like a $2 shop or something. Um, and I sprayed it in this lilac -y purple with spray paint. And then I just added some lavender because the purples went in with um, the purples in the truck uh, and used this purple sheer polka dot ribbon. It's wire edged. I got these for, that from Costco a few years ago. Um, and then I just added a little wood bunny that I got from, I think I might've got them from Kmart. I can't remember for sure. Um, that was this year as well. 
This little one here was another little freebie. I should have looked up where I got all the little freebies from. They're all from Pinterest, but um, this was Kristen, Kristen somebody? Kristen Schmidt, I think, um, this little design was from. It is so, so cute. Um, it was a bit of a pain to do on the Ada because it was a lot of half stitches, um, but it was not too bad. Um, it's another piece of Ada that I dyed myself. I think that one might be 14 or 16 count, I can't remember. And then this was a little picture frame that I picked up from an op shop um, and I liked that it had the wavy edges and I just covered the glass with some pink and beige, yeah, pink and beige um, check fabric and added, I thought this leaf come off something um, and it looked matched in with the flower, I thought, and then I just added the flower and a bit of Eastery stuff and the bunnies. So that one's super cute too. Um, okay, the next one, I don't remember who this was from either, but it was another freebie off of Pinterest. So I had this little wood board that I've gotten from a $2 shop. Oh no, I think I actually got this from an op shop um, not long ago. And I stitched it on some yellow and green um, Ada that I dyed, used some black gingham, and then I wrapped the twine around several times and then I added in the tulips, which I think makes it look like a bunch of tulips and the green ribbon bow and a little bunny. The little bunnies were a little pack and it had the bunnies and the carrots from um, Spotlight. Uh, getting there guys, down to the last three cross stitches. So this is another one from uh, Melissa from Pinker and Punk and Quilting. Um, this is 1869 Bunny Hop. It is so cute and it's stitched up over a day as well. Um, and then this little bunny I actually had, it does light up, um, but I don't have batteries in it. Uh, I have a second one and I just thought it went perfectly on there. And then I just added some little flowers in just so it was simple. Took 10 minutes to put together an FFO. Um, and that was also done on a yellow um, 14 count Ada that I colored myself. Okay, um, so this one here is another freebie I just found on Pinterest and I had this white, um, it's a light up thing. It's only cardboardy and a little bit of metal around the edge. Um, and I got this from Kmart several years ago. And so I mounted, decided to mount it on there because it needed some life. Um, this piece being just the plain white. And then I just tie, I mounted it on some black and white gingham. And then I just tied a strip of black and white gingham around as well. And added a little pink gingham bow and another one of those little bunnies. So that was another really cute little one. So turn the lights off on that now. And my last cross stitch finish, let me move that out of the way, is my favorite. <laughs> I love this so much. Um, this one is, here comes Peter Cottontail from Priscilla and Chelsea from the Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. And hopefully I can get it back far enough. Um, anyway, that's the stitched piece. I did this as a stitch along with my daughter. We both bought the pattern and did it. Um, she's in Germany. And then this was a door of like an entertainment unit I got from a council cleanup. I got two of them. Um, and so I sprayed it in the pink. Uh, it's like a corally pink. And then I spritzed on like some turquoise and a lilac -y color, I think. Um, and then I did two layers of fabric. I did the yellow the big one and I wrapped some twine around the top and bottom and added some leaves and flowers and then I did it's actually like a bright blue um, gingham and mounted it on that and then at the top I um, had this stuff I think I got from bed bath and table um, just like some picks um, with the little berry thing, ball thingies, and then just added these flowers. That was from my sister's wedding, um, from her bouquets. And then I added 
this a piece of that um the bunting bunny bunting i left it on the twine for this one and i added that and then between it i added these little felt carrots which were also from um kmart so they were the felted carrots and those ladies are so talented i love all of their patterns um so that was all of the cross stitch that i've done for this um this one uh so if you don't want to see the um the embroideries that i've done um thank you for watching and tuning in for this video i know this one's going to be a long super long video um but i've managed to get quite a lot done um so i'm just going to move in now on to the embroidery pieces oops oops i'm just going to have to move things a little bit closer oopsies so i'll show this one first so this was oops a piece from um embroidery library that i did and i had this um just a cake um I made the little stand as well with a cake tin and a piece of um, nice timber that I got my husband to cut down for me. And then I just added a little um, disc at the bottom, um, MDF disc. And then I just added in some greenery and I added the flowers in the back just to hold the pillow up a bit. So that's how I had that one finished. So I'll put it down and then I'll do a bit of a closer up of the pillow. And so that's the pillow. I love this one. And I'm going to keep this one out for now because I think it's not Easter specific. So I've got that one. So just give me a sec. I'm going to grab one more that's out of reach. Um, this is another little one from Embroidery Library. I think actually all of the ones I'm showing today are all from Embroidery Library patterns. But I did this cutie and I finished this one yesterday, FFO'd it. So I don't remember the names of all of what these ones are called, but that's that one. And then I just had this plastic turquoise um, platter thingy that I'd gotten from an op shop, I think. Um, and so I just mounted it onto that, added some trim around the edge, kept it simple, added the bows and the flowers. So that's that one. Next one, I finished this one yesterday too, that just says Happy Easter. Um, this was an embroidery from Embroidery Library and I just mounted it into a, um, a frame I got from an op shop. It was actually brand new from the op shop, still in its plastic. Uh, and then I just mounted some purple spot fabric for the back added in some trim and then just added some lilacs and the purple flower, a pink flower. And I think that one's super cute too. This one here I love as one of my little embroidery finishes that I've done. Um, so this one here is also from Embroidery Library. This little white tray I got from Kmart from the Easter section when they had it. It was $5. Um, and then so I mounted in a green corduroy fabric that I had for the background just to sort of look like a bit like grass kind of I guess and then I just added in some greenery with the orange bow and some turquoisey blue flowers and this little cute piece I had just sitting in my stash from a few years ago and a little carrot and I think that one turned out really cute I finished that one yesterday or the day before as well so I've just got two more things here I'm going to get and then I can move into all the pillows okay so this is another one that I did um bunny snacks from embroidery library as well and I just painted a piece of MDF um in a chocolate brown yeah I did a chocolate brown and then I just did some orange gingham fabric for the background added in some orange flower pieces added the carrots this little vine it's like a jute plaited jute twine with a vine in it from kmart and added some of those little wooden bunnies and that one turned out really cute too and then the other one i think is to me is a coordinating piece to that 
um, and it's the Chick Inn Peeps Welcome, and it's super cute too. Are you having puppy mares up there? Um, and then I just wrapped some twine around the bottom and the side and added in some yellow and some of those little twine butterflies I got from a $2 shop. Okay. Now I have a ton of embroidered pillows that I've done um, just to um, pop into little baskets and things like that around and I just wasn't in the mood for doing anything much other than pillows for a bit so I just went with it and I like how they turned out. So this this is all from Embroidery Library. So this one here is a little spring flower, flower um, floral chick, chicken. It's kind of hard to make out but it is a chicken. And then I just added on the back some yellow fabric that I had um, and added some mustardy colored um, yarn around the edge and the little bow and flower there is a lot guys a lot um this one here turned out really really cute too um so this little two bunnies with the little flowers and so on the back i did this green floral that had the matching sort of blue in it and some purple and the bright blue um yarn around the edge and then a yellow bow and some blue flowers and I think that one turned out super cute as well and I love it uh, this one here is probably one of one of my favorite embroideries there's a few um, that I did for the Easter spring stuff and that was the cottontail farms uh, it says strawberries lettuce and carrots at the bottom but to me, this is very farmhousey, and I love it. And I did the little yellow fabric on the back with the bright yellow yarn. I just added a little black and yellow flower. So that's um, super, super cute. This was a little bunny one. So I did that. Excuse my fingers. Pulling off hot glue strands. Um, so that cute little bunny and I did a cute little pink viney looking fabric for the back and then I added some pink ribbon around the edge it's like a chenille type of ribbon and then added some greenery and the twine bow and the pink flower at the top this one here is another one in my favorites um, along with the cottontail farms one and it's this little bunny topiary, Easter topiary tree, which is so cute. And then I have the pink around the edge, pink chenille ribbon. I did the purple gingham bow at the top with a little bit of pink gingham and a little bit of white and the button. And I think it just turned out cute as. And then I did some more of the pink, purple and green check fabric for the back. And I think that one turned out so adorable. This one here is probably my least favorite one. I'm not sure I like the colors of the bunny that I chose in this one. Um, but this was a free pattern that you got if um, you spent a certain amount every couple of weeks. They do sort of a deal like that for a weekend deal. So I got that as a free pattern. I'm just not sure I like the colors I've used in the bunny. I should have done, done more beigey tones, I think. It's okay, it's just not my favorite. Um, and then so I did this purple flower fabric on the back, which goes really well with the purples in it. And did the light purpley lilac um, yarn around the edge and just some purple gingham and green and a little white flower for the top of that one. This one here is really cute. This one's actually supposed to be an, um, an applique one um, in the hoop applique but I did it as just an embroidery and I omitted the first step um, which was the tack down stitch so and then I just did that onto there and then I did this pink for the background and then the blue yarn bright blue yarn and just added some um, pink gingham bow and flowers 
this one here is another little one um both from embroidery library as well uh and it's just got the bunnies with the vines i did the purple floral background with that one too and the lilac -y purple trim on that one as well and just a little bit of greenery and another little one of these they're like cornflowers or something like that i think they're called and then this is another one this little floral bunny is super cute and i did that one on the brown background fabric instead of just the calico and then on the back i've done this it's kind of almost like a paisley effect i guess in the yellow and the uh, mustardy color and then added a creamy yellow um, trim some lilacs and the green ribbon and the twine and the purple flower I told you I had a lot of embroidery pillows there's still we're probably about halfway so we've got a lot here uh, this is another little Easter one that I did and it just says the happy Easter eggs spring chick bunny basket hop and then it's got very cute pieces around it, little flowers and stuff. I did the orange gingham back for this one. And then this um, chenille yarn is one that changes from like the pink, the yellow and the blue. And I thought that fitted perfectly with um, the colors in this. And I just did a twine bow on top with some little yellow flowers. Uh, I'm running out of room to put everything. This one here, I think, is another cutie. It's so cute, this one. And then it's a little bunny. Um, and then it's got the, excuse me, or another type of orange gingham back fabric. And then, excuse me, I did a gray uh, yarn trim around the edge. And just some little orange flowers. I kept that one pretty simple. Oh, my back's getting sore sitting on the floor. Uh, this one here is another little one so cute little um, sheep so this is more springy not necessarily Easter and oops then I did this same I've done this on another pillow the green with the floral and just added this darker green ribbon uh, sorry yarn and some green ribbon gingham ribbon and the blue flowers and if you look at this, it's like got all that stitching in the center of the, the sheep. And there is a bunny one that matches that one. I haven't found that one yet. So these two, next two are my two absolute favorites that go along with the Carrots and Cotton Tails Farm one. And this is Mr. Buns. How adorable is it? It's so farmy and cute. <clears throat> so Mr. Buns Garden Service says hop to it with the little cute carrot with the um bunny with the carrot and i did the orange <coughs> excuse me the orange gingham <coughs> excuse me um backing on it i'm just gonna have a drink um and did the green trim and some little orange gingham and just the little but carrot <coughs> that was the little carrot button excuse me <coughs> buttons that were in with those other little pink buttons from spotlight uh so then this is the coordinating piece to that one which is mrs buns carrot cake <coughs> excuse me um how adorable is she and on the back i did the orange gingham again and I used this pretty blue yarn for the edge and just the green gingham and the carrot. Now this one here I've done twice. Um, so initially I did this one, which is the white bunny on like a caramelly kind of background. And my mum's like, you can't really see it. So I but I thought oh well I'll put it together anyway but I think you can see it pretty good I can anyway um it looks like it's coming up okay on camera too so I did that as the background which is a pink and beige and white coral uh fabric and 
the what just the white bow with the flower so then I redid it it was actually supposed to be three color changes and I just did that one as all white so then I did it on the pink and I did the white and two brownie beigey colors and she's like you still can't see it but I think you can see it I think it's um I can see it enough anyway and then on the back of this one I just did this beige with the pink uh, flowers and then I've also got a yarn on the edge and just the little butterfly the jute butterflies I got from a two dollar shop this one here is a really cute little piece too uh, another little bunny with the vines and then I did this pink for the back and I did this uh, another variegated yarn which is pink and greens for the edging and just a little bit of pink gingham bow and a green flower okay we're getting there so this one here I love as well I think it turned out really cute and I did this one on just a brown ch chocolate brown fabric um, and it's a bunny done out of florals in the whites and the caramel colors and then for the back I just did this brownie beigey floral fabric I did this um, plaited white and natural colored jute um, trim for the edge I added just a little jute bow and the apricot flower which I think blends in really well so then I have this little piece which I think is super cute um, and then on the back I just did this pink and beige um, fabric I just did a plain trim and I didn't add anything else I just did a little simple bow with the the yarn trim that I did on that one uh, okay we're down to the last few so I did this little one which is really cute did this purple on the back and then I just did a purpley trim and did the green gingham bow and another one of those little carrots from that little pack that I got from Spotlight. And then I'll just get these last ones out so I can put some of these back in to make a bit of room because I've got no room left here. Um, so this one here, I love this cutie little bunny with the floral headpiece and I did that into the variegated um, yarn which was the pink blue and yellows and then I just added some blues like her um, what's in her thing and pink flowers and then I added this bright blue for the back to match the blue and I actually made four more of these for Easter presents for my two daughters and my sister and my mum excuse me so I did this other little one which is so cute the flowers I did this pink floral fabric for the back and then I did some pink twine uh, sorry pink yarn for the trim I just added a tiny little um, green bow and blue flower just to match in with the flowers and then lastly for uh, the embroidery pieces that I've done I have this little bunny which goes with the same as that little sheep and I did the bright blue bow for this one's neck and I did it on the pink fabric and so I did the, bl the bright blue gingham back and the blue yarn and a little bright blue flower so that's it for the um, embroidery finishes I have one other little finished piece here that I did well it's a couple um, and I just saved these jars from spaghetti sauce and so I painted them up and sanded them oops Let's see if I can hold them up so I did the coral the mint green and the purple just to go with my Easter decor and I just wrapped around um, some jute twine and tied a little bow and then I thought that would be really cute to just put some flowers or something in as well so I'm gonna just take a break and clear up this stuff and then I'll come back and do the whole part of the video so I will be back in a second okay so I'm back um, 
So the first thing <clears throat> that I'm going to do as part of my haul is save the stitches. I got from my local op shop and that's this cute piece. And I wanted to do a little bit of a Mother's Day um, display this year because I was able to get some uh, Ray done Mother's Day. And this is a little mother's one. So it's the two geese and it says a mother is a lifelong friend. And so I got that for $3 at my local op shop. And then along with that, I got this Hardanger pack. That was $2 and it's got the two doily things in it. I'm going to see if I can do them, if I can manage to do Hardanger. And <clears throat> I'm going to do them for my mum for Mother's Day, hopefully, if I can. And then the other thing I got is the Primitive and Limited Edition and the Normal Limited Edition um, flosses from Victorian Motto Threads. There's a whole big story behind these threads. Um, they... Um, these were from maybe September last year. Um, she had sent them and I had updated my address in PayPal, but for some reason it, and I didn't notice it on checkout and it reverted back to our old address. And so they came up being delivered, but they weren't delivered here obviously because they were delivered to our old address. And so I rang the landlord to see if they'd actually I think I got my husband to ring him first not our land it wasn't the landlord it wasn't the real estate but it was the guy who owned it and we had his number and stuff and so I got him to ring him and ask him and he said no nothing had turned up anyway I, a few days later I decided to ring and ask him as well and he went off the bean abusing me and stuff and I said, I just said to him, nobody else had moved into the property. So they would have been delivered there and he would have been the one to find them because he'd been there doing work on the house. And so I asked if they had been delivered and I said, look, I'm just asking again because I'm going to be reporting it to the police as mail fraud because I know he had them. Um, and he went off the bean abusing the hell out of me um and stuff and saying why the hell are you reporting it to the police blah 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 anyway so i did i followed through and i reported it to the police um especially after the way he treated me and abused me and i never had any update back from the police but then i think it was um must have been february Nancy knew about the rigmarole and stuff um, because I'd been in contact with her and um, I tried to get it sorted out through PayPal, not from it being Nancy's issue, but PayPal had been the ones who reverted back to the old address and I had ordered other things prior to that that still came to this house, so I don't understand how it changed back. But really it was probably my fault because I should have double checked on the way out on checkout and stuff. But anyway, Nancy and I had been in contact about it. Um, and so I just assumed that they were gone forever. Um, and then in February, she emailed, sent me an email saying, I can't believe it, but they've turned up back at my place. So the landlord after calling the police must have got guilty or felt guilty or something. And then he must have posted them. Instead of posting them to me, he posted them back to her. So they made it took four months to get back to her but anyway they got back to her so she was gonna ask if I wanted to be refunded the money and I said look can I just get them sent so I paid the extra shipping and um, got her to send them and so they finally turned up and I mean they are gorgeous colors so I did pull out of the club for a little while but I think I'd like to rejoin at some point um, I've just got some extra bills at the moment so I'm gonna wait but I'd like to eventually rejoin the club um because they're gorgeous and i'm super happy and i can't wait to use them i've been holding off using them because i wanted to um show you guys um then so this is the hippity hoppity from shannon christine design patterns uh that was the one that i've already stitched so that one there i just have kept in here just to show you 
uh, and then I also got I also bought the pattern for the cottontail one I don't know if I've sat it back in here um, actually I might have actually not printed that I had to get hubby to print my patterns at his work because we still don't have ink for our printer and at this point it's actually cheaper to buy a new printer than it is to buy the ink for it so that's probably what I'm gonna do um, but I got from the stitching with the housewives the carrot patch pattern I didn't get to stitching it but I'd like to for next year uh, sugar stitches I love her patterns and so I got this cottontail cupcakes pattern they're all in black and white because that's how his work printer prints them they don't print in color so they're all black and white unfortunately um, but go check out sugar stitches she has the most gorgeous patterns and I love her patterns so much um, I also got cottontail oops cottontail carrot patch and I got cottontail candies and <clears throat> cottontail delivery and happy Easter from her and then this one was an Etsy purchase from Honey Eater Crafts on Etsy and it's called actually I'll do this one first so there's Easter Bunny one and then I also got Easter Bunny 2 and then this one is from London Cross Stitch on Etsy and it's Chocolate Bunny Factory this one here is not going to be the best to show you um, because it hasn't printed correctly it's only printed part of it because hubby hasn't done it to fit the page um, but it's carrot farm and I uh, from primrose cottage stitches so you can go and check that out on her in her, her Etsy shop and then I got chicken mum by Gwyneth designs from Etsy as well And I got My Cow from Gwyneth Designs as well. And then I have since purchased, um, which I haven't got hubby to print because he was on holidays, um, the Pink Barn from Shannon Christine Designs. I love her designs as well. She's very, very talented. Um, and I love stitching all her stuff. Um, so I got that as well. And then I did get... An Easter Bunny one from Sub Rosa, um, which he wasn't able to print at work, maybe because it's got to be printed from my email, so I'm not too sure. So I need to get on to see if I can print that at Office Works or something like that. Um, otherwise, I'll just do it from my phone. And then the other thing that I did buy some of from Spotlight with the yarn trims that I get. I like to purchase the ones that come in these bags and these bags have been on sale for six dollars at the moment and so I got like the gray a gray one I got a red one I like to buy the chunkier ones because they go on a bit easier with blue I got like that orangey red I got a chocolate brown one and I got a green one kind of green I got a navy blue one because I wanted some navy and some reds for when I do Australia Day ones this one here is not as thick but it should still be fine and it's I thought it would be really good for Easter ones it's the creamy grey with some pink and yellow in it and then I got some canvases just from Kmart I think they were like five dollars or seven dollars or something and you get four canvases and these ones are 20 by 20 um, centimeters and I thought they'd be really good for a few stitches that I have planned and then I did get some fabric as well it's, um, 
I got from Spotlight also just another little bit of a supply of the DMC needles because I needed some more. Um, and from Kmart, I bought this paper wire, which I have a plan for. I seen um, Christy from Java Girl Stitches did as one of her ones finishes last year and she did bunny ears at the top and I thought that would be really good being the paper wire to do the bunny ears so I want to try that on a finish probably next year and then I got from Spotlight also these I got four of them in hopes to make a quilt I'm gonna see if I can get some more but Meister only had four so when I go to visit my mum next I'm gonna have a look um, and it's got, it's just a fat quarter bundle. So it's got five fat quarters in it, but I thought it was really pretty. So I want to do a quilt with that. And then I got this little um, stash starter one, which was a turquoise floral, which I thought would be really good for Easter ones as well. So that's it for haul. There was one other thing I was supposed to grab to show you, um, but I didn't. So I'm just going to go and grab that now. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to show for this video, I have seen these little stools going around on a lot of the American um, floss tubers for displaying cross stitches and stuff. And so I had hubby make me some. Um, it's kind of heavy because it's hardwood. Uh, so I got him to make me three of them, um, which is super, super cute. I can't wait to display some cross stitches on those. They are really heavy though, mine. Um, we've done it with hardwood that I got. Um, I hauled it for free from a tip shop that we went to because I wanted that rusticy look and it was from like an old fence, old gate. So I did that. Um, and I did get a few more cross stitches done, but I have got them out in my craft room, um, little Easter ones that I'll probably finish off for the next video um, to show you. I just didn't get to finishing them. I was hoping to, but I didn't get around to it. Um, so I've done that. And then the other exciting bit of news is we're waiting on grandson number four to make his arrival. Um, he's a few days over at this point, um, so not long. Um, so we're really excited, although he will be born, um, his mum is in uh, Germany, so he'll be born over there. So we won't get to see him for a while because um, the travel restrictions with COVID and stuff. Um, so that's unfortunate, but at least we can Skype and stuff, hopefully. So we'll do it over FaceTime or Skype um, to be able to see him. We might do like a sip and see for him so that we can... Um, like get together and have a little sip and see um facetime party so that's how we did her baby shower was by facetime as well um so that was good so that's the last little bit of news so by next video he should be here so i can't wait um to meet him and get to see him it's so exciting so i have three other grandsons um my second oldest daughter has a little boy called Charlie. He's four and she has twin boys, Alec and Tyler, who I have just turned one. So it's exciting um, having have four grandsons. They're so adorable um, and it's so fun getting to see them and uh, spend time with them. Um, so hopefully we will get to see grandson number four sometime soon. Um, but we've just come out of, uh, well, they've been in lockdown here. Um, not here where we are, but in Brisbane. Um, we're out towards Toowoomba. But all of Queensland had to has is in mask mode at the moment. So I that's the other thing that I did get made. I've made about 30-odd face masks for all of my family. Um, I have more cut out that I need to make up still because I've given most of them away and I've only got two and hubby's only got two. So... Um, but that, I mean, I don't go out very much. So for me, it's not too bad, but <clears throat> with hubby being at work, um, he had last week off though. So he didn't really need too many, but he's back at work this week. So I'm going to make a few more for him as well. So that's <clears throat> about it. I think we've got another few days. I think Thursday that ends 
at this point. So just waiting to see what happens now in case they extend it or not. Who knows? Um, so, <coughs> excuse me. Thank you all for watching my video. I know today's one is a long one. So thank you to everyone who stuck it out till the end. I appreciate all of you and I will be back in a few weeks with another update. Bye for now.